What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. Today we're gonna to talk about the different types of substrate for reptiles. So there's all different kinds of substrates out there on the market that we can use. Some are geared specific to, specifically towards reptiles and pets. Others are just substrate that we can make substrate. Things like uh, newspaper or uh, butcher block paper, anything like that can be very useful as a substrate. And there's all different pros and cons and advantages to each one. And I think that's what a lot of you guys are asking me about is which one do I recommend? Um, to get right into that specific question, which one I recommend, is I personally like to change it up. I change it up based on how I'm feeling, what I'm cleaning, how often I can clean, and, uh, and the different environmental conditions of the snakes. I right now have maybe three or four different substrates going. I have aspirin, I have uh, cypress mulch, and I have newspaper, and then I have just some butcher block paper. And it's really just kind of for different purposes of different snakes. I've found some of them do better on some than the others. So it's um, right now I'm a big fan of Aspen. Previously, I really hated Aspen bedding um, for a whole bunch of reasons we're going to get into in this video. So let's first start off with like the paper types of substrate. Things like newspaper, unprinted newsprint, um, butcher block, computer paper, those PP pads, things, anything like that, uh, paper towels. So they're just in general paper products. Um, I think some of the first ones I mentioned, things like newspaper, unprinted newsprint, uh, butcher block, those are all fantastic options. Specifically, if you can keep these cages uh, clean, you can go in, pull out the paper, completely sterilize the whole container or the whole enclosure, put your snake back and you're good to go. Where you're going to run into problems with newspaper and paper in general is probably going to be your humidity. Now there are things you can do, you can, you can seal off some of the ventilation in your enclosure, you can mist the cage frequently, but overall that's not going to hold humidity for a long period of time. What you need for humidity is a type of bedding and usually a, a moist damper bedding that holds a little bit of, um, of volume to it because that's where you're going to get your humidity. We could spray a newspaper but within the next couple hours if your cage temperatures are right and your ventilation is good, you're going to probably drop that humidity back down to whatever your ambient is in your entire room. So if you live in a humid environment someplace like Florida or Texas or if you're overseas and you're living in some place that's more humid, you might be able to get away with the paper. And if you're doing using paper for a purpose, that's also good. If you have a sick snake, quarantine snake, these are perfect for that environment because you can easily, like I said, pull it out, clean it. Things like paper towels. I was never a huge fan of sorbent products. Paper towels, wee wee pads for puppies and stuff. I see a lot of people using those. My problem with the with the sorbent type of paper products is that exactly by nature of what they do is they absorb moisture. So it's good when they when they pee and they go to the bathroom, but at the same time these products are absorbing moisture from the air. They're taking your humidity out, specifically those pee pee pads. I don't know where that started, when it started, but I'm starting to see a lot of them. And that's something that I don't necessarily recommend, uh, the pee pee pads. I'm a big fan of the newspaper. I like the unprinted newsprint, the butcher block. I've seen even cardboard liners. But those, those pee pee pads or wee wee pads, whatever they're called for puppies, that you can put them in the corner of the room and your puppy pees on it because you're too lazy to go outside, those things are... Um, those are perfect for like absorbing liquids and by putting them in the cage at the floor it's absorbing all the moisture and humidity out of the cage so i don't recommend those for more tropical species or subtropical like boa constrictors but uh, if you're using it for a desert species maybe it could work because you're actually reducing the humidity in the process the second type of substrate we'll go into, or maybe the last one, are the, um, we'll do two. We'll do kind of the, the drier, uh, the drier chipped woods and drier chipped barks, things like that. So things like aspen shavings. Um, I think you can use, use kin, kin dried pine. I've never used it because I know pine in general is toxic and I just didn't really see the need. I'll just use aspen. Right now I'm on an aspen kick. I really enjoy it. I did not like aspen for a long time. I found it to be messy, dusty, and it doesn't hold humidity well. If you put aspen and water together, it's going to grow mold within a couple days. In a lot of the environments we have for these snakes, that is uh, kind of exactly what we don't want. We have this situation where we have a lot of humidity and, and substrate that easily molds up, but lately I've been using it because I'm finding it really easy to do a complete cage clean. I will notice that underneath the water bowls where it doesn't have sufficient airflow, I'll get a little bit of mold growing, but at that point I scoop out the whole cage and dump it and then we're good to go again. I'll replace it. 
it can get a little pricey because uh, you know, well, if you have a small collection, maybe it isn't. But I buy the four quart bags; they're like thirteen to fifteen dollars a bag. But I need about fifteen of them every month or so, so it can add up. And uh, maybe not fifteen; let's call it ten a month uh, that I, that I'm going through just to keep all my snakes clean and things like that. So I'm spending about one hundred fifty dollars a month on on substrate. And that's something that, uh, because the aspen molds up, it's something I do have to continue to keep on, keep up on top of. I have to continually waste the bedding by every maybe two weeks to three weeks is about as far as I can stretch it with aspen. But I find that for, with my busy schedule, being able to go into these cages and spot clean quickly, that's important to me, is the efficiency that I can get from a bedding. And I was using newspaper for a while because I wanted to keep things really sterile going into breeding season. I wanted to make sure there were no mites, no parasites, and nothing going on. And that's why I used the newspaper. Once I said, okay, everything's in good shape, let's swap it all over to Aspen. And that's where I'm at now. One that I used for a really long time, we're going to get kind of into the third category, but we'll call it the chipped barks. Uh, I liked cypress mulch. I use cypress mulch, and, and I really enjoy that stuff. Problem with cypress mulch, again though, is it can be a little bit dusty, but the advantage to it is we can spray this stuff. Cypress mulch can sit into a puddle of water and dry out and do it again and again and again, and it's not going to get uh, mold. So that's a really nice advantage to cypress mulch, is that you don't get mold. It can be a little bit dusty, especially the way I buy it. I buy it from the hardware store. It is 100% cypress. You need to make sure you're doing that if you're buying it from a hardware store is that it needs to say 100% cypress mulch. If you have a cypress blend, that could be mixed with pine and other things, cedar, that you don't want. Typically not cedar because cedar's a more expensive wood, but cypress in general, if you're paying under, let's call it seven to eight dollars for a, a large bag, then it's probably a blend. If you're buying this stuff from a pet store, you're gonna be spending 30, 40 bucks for a bag of this stuff. So. I don't think it's really an economical situation if you don't have a, a hardware store around you. I go to a farm feed store around me and get that's where I get my cypress from. But uh, if you do some digging around, you might be able to find it. I think it works fantastic. The other types of wood bark would be things like cocoa chip or cocoa husk, or there's a new one that Freedom Breeders putting out. I'm drawing a blank on the name, Repta Chip, I think it is. And I've heard great things. I've never personally used the Repta Chip. And um, I don't really intend to. It's kind of like this bricked up uh, mulch that you, it comes in a brick, you soak it in water, it expands, and then you use it. I'd prefer just to buy the bag. It's much cheaper for me. And again, with the amount of snakes I have, I can't be going through it. The nice thing about Cypress that I don't have with Aspen is I can stretch it longer. So one bag of Cypress that cost me about seven or eight bucks, um, again, it might be initial, I might need to buy 10 of those bags to get me through my whole room, maybe 20 of those bags to get me through all the snakes. But once it's in there, those, those bags last me a good couple months. I don't need to consistently change them like the, like the, the Aspen did, because the Aspen gets more wear and tear from, from just the humidity. It'll mold up a lot quicker compared to the Cypress, where now I'm just spot cleaning. I'll clean out the, the dirty area, I'll put new Cypress in. I'll spot clean the next cage, put new Cypress. And then eventually, after a couple months, the whole bin of Cypress, it's just good to dump it all out and replace it with some new stuff. So I do like that, but unlike Aspen, it doesn't clump up. So I found Aspen, it clumps up into small pieces, it's more easy, it's easier to find um, anything that, any of the defecate from the snake, scoop it out and toss it away, where the cypress, it doesn't clump up in that sense. So I can pull out their poop and stuff, but when, it, when they urinate, it, it's, I have to over scoop and really take that out if I want to get a good clean cage. So from that sense, I've decided to switch over to Aspen. I like doing, doing the more frequent changes because I feel overall it's a little bit more hygienic. So that's my take on those. And then the fourth category we're going to go into, I'll call it like the powdered substrates. Um, this might be uh, like cocoa husk, uh, cocoa, cocoa, I forget what they call it, cocoa mulch. Uh, it's basically like little pieces of stuff, like a peat moss almost. And I think that works really well, but when you feed in the enclosures, that's where I was having the problem. That's almost like a nice mix between aspirin and, aspen and cypress, is that it will clump when they, when they go to the bathroom, but at the same time it won't mold like the aspen does. The problem that I have with it is that uh, over time, you know, I'm feeding in the enclosures, I put a wet rodent in there because I just defrosted it and warmed it up in some warm water, and now this whole rodent looks like a powdered donut that was just thrown around in this cocoa husk stuff. 
So all of that together, it I didn't like the amount of substrate the snakes were ingesting. I don't think it's going to hurt them. These things eat dirt in the wild. Uh, they kill a prey and they ingest stuff. But in captivity, I just didn't like the fact that these snakes are going to be ingesting all this substrate because I'm feeding them in their enclosures. So again, it has a time and a place. You can stretch that one a little bit longer, maybe a month and a half, two months before you have to dump the whole thing. The problem with that is when it gets dry, it gets very dusty. So I would recommend it only for like a tropical species. But then you have things like sand, which can be can have its place like a concrete sand you buy at Home Depot, a 50 pound bag for two bucks, can have its place with some animals. With the species like I keep, sand really doesn't have a place in what I'm doing unless I'm mixing it in some type of a bioactive enclosure. And that is something I'm going to discuss, is a bioactive enclosure and how sand and leaf litter and peat moss and cypress and all these things mixed together can make a really fantastic substrate. So this is more just on straight substrate types. We can then go into a whole different video topic on doing blends of these things. And I would recommend that. You might want to do a blend of cypress with this cocoa husk. Um, that way you have the, the coarse particles and the fine particles. And the, the coarse particles will be easy to move around. The fine particles will hold the, the, their defecates a little bit better and make it easier for you to clean in the future. So with all that said, we went through the four bedding types and um, hopefully you guys can make a better decision on which one you want to use. Like I said, right now I have uh, asked Aspen in all the cages. I don't know if you can see behind me, but I'm, I'm a big fan of Aspen, but it can be messy and I have a vacuum. Every time I clean cages, I have to clean it up. So that's my current pick of choice is Aspen, but um, you need to make up your own mind. I'm sure if we did this video again in three months, I might be on a different substrate type. So hopefully you guys enjoy these videos. I'll keep making them if you guys keep watching. Keep subscribing, keep liking, share the videos, it helps, and we'll keep these videos going. Thanks guys.